बच्चों एंड वेलकम टू पी डब्ल्यू फुल इंग्लिश वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी क्लास आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड एंड टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद योर ब्रांड न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज हाउ डू ऑर्गेनिजम्स रिप्रोड्यूस सिंस यू ऑल आर अवेयर अबाउट द सीरीज लेट मी राइट द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर फर्स्ट इट इज हाउ डू ऑर्गेनिजम्स रिप्रोड्यूस If you are new here, you must know that we have started a series of super thirty questions in which we are completing all the questions, all the CBSE targeted important questions which might come in your exam or the concept must come in your exam. So, how we are going to complete this lecture with thirty questions? We will co- we will try to cover almost the whole chapter, and I will explain the concept as well. So, without any further delay, let us dive into the video. How do organisms reproduce? You must have completed this chapter. in your schools in this chapter we study about the reproduction process but in both plants and also in animals right so the way of reproduction the method of reproduction is different in different organisms broadly we have classified reproduction into two parts one is asexual reproduction and other is sexual reproduction the main difference between these two types is asexual reproduction stands for when there is only one parent involved it is not identified as male and female there is just one parent and there are different methods in which that parent can give rise to new individuals we don't classify that parent as male or female but when we talk about sexual reproduction then two parents are there one is male one is female and both the parents are producing special type of cell that cell is called as germ cell or gamete male and female gamete respectively or we also call it reproductive cell both these cells produced by different identities they fuse together to form one cell which is zygote and then further cell division take place in zygote and the organism is produced so if we talk about variation variation is that we all look different from each other right our hair look different our height is different even uh if we talk about one nuclear family one family one blood relation is there even then there are so many differences but there are some uh similarities also but no single person on earth is 100% identical to another person there is always slight variation existing what is the reason for that that variation comes from sexual reproduction since i told you that the gametes of male and female two different parents are fusing together those gametes have a uh, different dna and those dna fuse together to bring some differences and the dna is also responsible for the similarities as well okay now rest of the concepts we will cover along with the questions i hope that is okay with all of you now the first question on your screen is it looks lengthy but it is an mcq based question only the question says you have to match the following with column 1 and column 2 right the answer is written already let me clear it for you first right let's read it out hydra then there is amoeba then there is mucor and then there is planaria all these are living organisms and in column t or column 2 some type of asexual reproduction is written binary fission is also a type of asexual reproduction spore formation also budding also regeneration also all these are different types of asexual reproduction so if we talk about hydra which is aquatic basically small multicellular organism hydra chooses which method of asexual reproduction remember the diagram of hydra it has the cylindrical body it comes in the phylum nidaria over its head it has these tentacles going on which are you know quite poisonous it protects the hydra from the predators basically now if it has to reproduce what hydra does is with the help of cell division and some totipotent cells or regenerative cells anywhere on the body it starts producing some kind of cell division and that cell division give rise to a bud this bud is nothing just the small size of the parent body it looks like the child of this parent plant now this bud it looks like the parent plant only but it is very smaller in size it starts growing when it is mature enough it detaches itself from the parent body and new hydra is produced so this is how binary fission not binary fission this is how budding take place in hydra so shall i write down answer number 3 over here 
hydra budding then let's talk about amoeba amoeba is very easy you must remember about uh, amoeba everything you remember about amoeba and the reproduction is binary fission this is parent amoeba it starts splitting itself into two parts first the nucleus divides and then the cytoplasm divides giving rise to two daughter amoeba cells so amoeba reproduces by binary fission bi means two fission means to break the parent amoeba splits into two parts to produce new daughter cells now what is this mucor if this word is new for you remember mucor is a type of fungus have you ever seen a bread rotting in your house in your kitchen it turns green and it smells very bad you know so that mucor is a fungus growing over that bread now fungus most of the fungus reproduces by the method of spore formation what is spore formation let me tell you here only let's just say this is the stale bread we were talking about now if you uh, look with the help of a microscope you will see these filament like structures which are made up of very minute threads known as hyphae those hyphae group together and form these filaments for the support it also has these root like structures which are known as rhizoids and the fiber like structure are hyphae over the hyphae are blob like structures which is known as sporangiophore inside these sporangiophore are very small powdery particles known as spores so whenever the right optimum conditions arrive the sporangiophore burst and all the spores fall over the places fall over the different places on the bread and this is how it spreads all over the packet it spreads all over the bread and this is this is the method of reproduction in muca so can we say muca reproduces by spore formation done then planaria it is a very simple type of flat worm if i have to draw it it looks like this it has two receptor cells which work as eyes basically and it has very slimy body now accidentally if this planaria is cut down in th into three parts you will see all these three parts will regenerate rest of the body part now how this is happening it is not possible in us but it is possible in planaria and some uh, limbs of amphibians and reptiles also because they have some regenerative cells and those cells totipotent cells also those cells have the capability to regrow to the original condition so if the head is uh, cut into pieces the rest of the body starts growing this is known as regeneration re means again generation means to generate to get generated this is uh, not the main method of reproduction of planaria it is the case of accident if planaria by chance loses its any part of the body it starts regenerating so 3 1 2 4 answer c is correct right let's move to next question multiple fission occurs in c fission means to break there are two types of fission one is binary fission done by amoeba and one is multiple fission so the term itself is suggesting binary means two multiple means so many right multiple fission when the parent cell is breaking into different types of cells different a uh, more number of cells extra number of cells now this is plasmodium nothing but one cell only now it will starts producing two cells it doesn't stop here it keeps on reproducing like this it keeps on doing multiple cell division first karyokinesis take place which is the division of nucleus and then cytokinesis take place which is the division of cytoplasm so it performs multiple times both the steps both the processes are done multiple times with the help of plasmodium this is the parent here now to protect itself from the poor conditions it forms an outer covering which is known as cyst so any way the question can come either the hint will be based on the type of reproduction the question can also come over cyst that in which organism cyst is formed to protect the babies or it can also ask plasmodium if you remember is responsible for causing a deadly disease malaria it is basically a protozoa it belongs to protozoa category and it will cause the disease malaria so either the question can come this way also 
there is a protozoa which is responsible for causing malaria how does it reproduces so you should remember it performs multiple fission and after performing fission it forms an outer covering surrounding itself which is known as cyst the cyst will break only when the right conditions arrive are we ready for question number 3 i guess we are which one is correct so you have to identify the right statement it shows hydra shows multiple fission this is wrong we just read hydra shows budding plasmodium shows budding we just read plasmodium shows multiple fission isn't the question very easy spirogyra shows fragmentation yes this is absolutely right spirogyra is a type of algae the parent spirogyra is very long and filamentous filamentous means thread like and it breaks itself into smaller smaller pieces and all those pieces mature to give rise to a new spirogyra so this statement is right onion reproduced by root so no onion reproduced by adventitious buds moving on next question assertion reason i always say that these questions are quite important let us read this one so assertion is individual produced by asexual reproduction are known as clones so we talked in asexual reproduction this is the parent cell it has 46 chromosomes let me change the color it has 46 chromosomes and this is the dna of this parent cell now what will happen this parent dna will duplicate itself so the exact chromosome exact condition is duplicated here and the duplicated chromosome will be passed on to the new cell to the new daughter cell now do you expect a very large amount of variation here it is not possible because the dna is just copied as it is and there are very very less chances of variation in this case variation comes when the dna of two parents is mixing up it separates first gametogenesis take place let's just say this is 46 chromosome this is also 46 chromosome first of all they are going to separate into 23 23 and then any 23 chromosome and any 23 of the other chromosome parent is going to mix up and form the new cell and together forms the 46 chromosome which is the case in us you must remember all these things see we are at the end of the term and we expect i expect that you have studied all these things a recap is i am going to give you a complete recap a complete revision but you should have the basics basic knowledge of everything right to understand the questions so in this case variation is possible because the chromosome or the genetic material of two parents is combining in the asexual reproduction it is not possible just like you get the notes of your friend photocopied by the photocopy machine right same is happening here the dna is copied as it is now when the dna is as it is copied the genetic material is exactly same we call it clones have you seen the movie robot if not what happens in the movie is so there is a uh, basically there is a robot and he wants to you know fight uh, from the enemy and he creates his clones now that clone means bilkul the exact copy of the original robot that is clone so can we say that in asexual reproduction since variation is not happening can we call it clone yes it is true now come to reason they are known as clones because they are genetically identical only phenotypically being phenotypically identical is not enough here phenotypically identical means uh, similarities in the physical traits even the genetic material should be same so yes it is also true and we can see that reason is somewhere justifying option a so right answer will be this option a both are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion now next one amoeba reproduces by binary fission isn't this statement true yes it is let us write down this is true now reason is amoeba on division produce two identical daughter cells isn't that the meaning of binary fission producing two identical means completely we are talking about the genetically similarities produce two identical daughter cells this is also true and then we see that reason is the correct explanation of assertion we can take on option a next one if the body of planaria gets cut cut into a number of pieces then each body piece can be grown into a complete planaria i have just explained this concept to you planaria is a very simple worm worm and it reproduces 
not all the time but sometimes it performs regeneration which is not the main method of reproduction but regeneration is easily seen in planaria so this is true as per the concept now reason says planaria possesses great power of regeneration because it has regenerative cells that is why it is performing regeneration both are true and can we say that reason is the correct explanation of assertion yes option a is correct next one the anther contains what so let me help you with the concept first there are two types of flower complete or incomplete or we can say unisexual or bisexual when i talk about the complete flower when i talk about the complete flower it has four whorls the outer whorl is of the colorful uh, petals you see the yellow ones the red ones the green ones not the green ones yellow red you know there are different colors of flowers you see so the color is possessed by these petals then the inner circle is of okay let me let me correct this let me correct this the outermost is not petals outer one is sepals you see the green part first when the flower is in bud condition it has these very small green leaf like structure covering the colored part like this you must have seen this condition now this green part is known as sepals which is the outermost whorl then we come to the innermost whorl not the innermost whorl the second one it is colorful we call these petals then since we are talking about the complete flower it is also known as bisexual flower bisexual means having the both male and female identities so it means for the male part it will have stamen also and for the female part it will have carpel or we call it pistil as well carpel or pistil also right so all these four whorls are present in one single flower we call it complete or bisexual if i have to draw the figure here this is the centermost part stigma style ovary combinedly known as carpel and pistil and third whorl will be of filament and anthers now this is the stamen part this is complete flower but when we talk about incomplete flower or unisexual flower unisexual flower means it will have petals and sepals but for the reproductive part either it will have stamen or either it will possess pistil or carpel the fancy name for stamen is androecium the fancy name for female part pistil is gynoecium so in case these terms come in your question paper don't get confused right androecium and gynoecium so either the uh, either the flower is going to possess the stamen or either the pistil we call it unisexual flower now your task is write now memorize or cite examples of these flowers in the comment section you have to write down which are unisexual flowers okay other than papaya and watermelon theek okay? hai now moving on anther stamen is composed of two parts one is filament and one is anther this one i'm talking here this is filament and over this bilobed structure known as anther now the role of filament is to provide height to the anthers and here the main role is of anthers anthers are the one producing pollen grains and pollen grains possess the male gamete which will fertilize with the female gamete and will form the zygote so these are anthers these are bilobed and anthers will produce powdery substance yellow powdery substance known as pollen grains i hope the concept is now clear now let's come to the question the question is very simple here the anther contains what sepals no that's the green part ovules no this is the female part carpel it is again the female part A pollen grains is the right answer option d anther contains pollen grains next question variation occurs because of variation budding the answer is wrong because budding is a part of asexual reproduction dna is as it is copied so no chances of variation regeneration also no asexual reproduction this is also wrong 
sexual reproduction is the answer and the reason will be since the genetic material of two parents is getting mixed up and forming the new cell that is why there are chances of variation next after fertilization the ovary will turn into dash okay now let me again give you a quick revision of the concept stigma style ovary and ovary is ovary possess the ovules there can be one ovule there can be two ovule and it is it can have so many ovules also just in this case now filament anthers so can we say this is bisexual flower complete flower i'm not uh, drawing those petals and sepals here now after fertilization the ovary will turn into dash how does fertilization take place let's just say a pink colored pollen grain has arrived now this pollen grain will have two male gametes the role of these male gametes is to fuse with the ovule let me change this diagram for you and let me come to the single ovule condition okay here imagine there is only one ovule inside the ovary this is the ovule okay now inside ovule is the embryo sac so actually it is embryo sac <coughs> embryo sac is the one which will have the female gamete okay female gametophyte now the condition of embryo sac is seven celled eight nucleus eight nuclei now if there are seven cells the nucleus should the count of nucleus should also be seven what is this seven celled and eight nuclei doesn't it look odd the reason will be there are three antipodal cells with one nucleus each so now it is justified three cells three nucleus then here is the uh, egg cell with one nucleus then here are two synergids each with one nucleus but in the center there is a central cell possessing two nucleus this is known as polar nuclei so this is the unique condition here one cell has two nucleus it will form endosperm now this egg cell will fuse with the one of the male gamete to form the zygote the another male gamete will fuse with the polar nuclei to form endosperm right now the question was after fertilization ovary will change into what this was the ovule right ovule will change into seed after fertilization what will happen to this ovary students ovary will change into fruit have you ever seen an apple or tomato you must have seen so when you cut an apple the part white part you eat is the ovary was ovary in the past and the seeds that you see are the were the ovules in past i hope it you got it now so after fertilization the ovary will turn into fruit what happens to sepals and petals other than ovule and ovary rest of the parts are withered off they fall off from the flower next question after the formation of sperms they will be stored in dash now if i talk about the male reproductive system testes are the primary sex organs there are occur in pair i am drawing only one here now these are the testes where formation of sperms takes place now just behind the testes if we are looking the front view behind the testes is there there is a coiled tube named as epididymis 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 okay this is one coiled tube after epididymis there is a long tube named as vas deferens vas deferens or sperm duct one and same thing so what happens with sperm sperms are formed in the testes then they come into epididymis and then they travel to vas deferens and then uh, passes through the urethra but here the sperms are not completely matured maturation takes place with the help of three glands three accessory glands which comes on later now what is the role of epididymis in epididymis there is a temporarily storage of sperms for a while so sperms are stored in epididymis for a while let's come to the question after the formation of sperms they will be stored in so this is the exact question answer will be epididymis vas deferens actually vas deferens after epididymis the sperms will travel through vas deferens they are not stored in vas deferens urinary bladder is the pouch like structure which is responsible for storing the urine so this is not the answer now there is this term scrotum 
this is very important scrotum is the outer covering of testis don't forget this moving on choose the incorrect male accessory glands see i just told you sperms once travel through vas deferens here is urinary bladder and urinary bladder gave rise to a tube no, named as urethra sperms also want to pass through here only because there is no other passage for sperm to come out so it will also reach here but before coming to urethra it meets three nurses and those nurses are accessory glands why i call them as nurses because they are giving nutrition to the sperm they are adding fluid to the sperm and they are helping the sperm to be more motile motile you understand which can move so sperm has a tail which moves in circular motion to perform the movement there are three glands present here namely one is seminal vesicle okay one is prostate gland which is triangular and the last one is p like paired bulbo urethral gland and another name is cowper's gland so together these three glands work and changes sperm to semen semen is actually sperms along with the fluids and all the nutrition basically so all these three glands ready the sperm or the semen we can say so that it can pass from the uh, urethra now can we say that urethra in case of males is the common way or the common passage for urine and for semen because of this we give a special name to this area urino genital tract okay now let's come to the question what what is the incorrect male accessory gland seminal vesicle is a paired gland prostate is not paired triangular shaped gland and bulbo urethral is also a gland which one is not the gland here urino genital duct this is actually the urethra only from where the urine and semen both are passing together now what is the function of scrotum i just told you scrotum is the outer covering of testis release seminal fluid wrong formation of sperms take place in testis maintain the low temperature of the testis transfer of sperms into female genital tract right answer is maintain the low temperature of testis so it is the outer covering of scrotum and scrotum is responsible for maintaining the temperature inside the testis so the right formation of sperm takes place sperm formation takes place at 34 or 35 degree celsius which is 2 to 3 degree celsius less than our normal body temperature what is the normal body temperature 37 degree celsius sperm formation does not take place at this temperature it requires little coldness 2 to 3 degree celsius less temperature that is why testes are located outside the abdominal cavity now moving on urethra is common duct for duct means tube urethra we just talked about it is common in case of males sperm and feces no semen and urine is the answer only urine sperm and seminal fluid actually semen and urine are the right terms next question the estrogen and progesterone are responsible for these two are the female hormones estrogen and progesterone okay and both these hormones are released from ovary are released from ovary now these two hormones are responsible for all the female secondary sexual characteristics like the feminine voice the formation of memory glands the wide uh, the body structure and every every feature of the female is you know conducted by these two hormones also the menstrual cycle the menstruation is also controlled by these two hormones okay even after the pregnancy these two hormones are the one working the most so responsible for what implantation of fetus isn't it the right answer because even after pregnancy these two hormones are working development of fetus also this is also true growth maintenance and functioning of secondary sex organs of female so can we say all of these is the right answer because these two are the hormones which are working the most in case of females next one now this question is quite interesting a and b are the two reproductive organs of females so you have to guess which is a and which is b these are the two reproductive organs and of females a is responsible for the nourishment of the developing embryo and b is where sperms encounter egg which are these respectively so if i talk about the female reproductive system it looks something like this so 
So, this pear like structure which I have drawn here is the uterus. Here, the development of a baby takes place. I don't know why, why the baby looks so happy, but the nine months development of the baby takes place here only, which is the uterus. So, isn't it quite understood that the nourishment of baby is also taking place in uterus, right? So, uh, after pregnancy, after implantation of fetus, mother prepares a special tissue or disc like structure named as placenta. And this placenta is responsible for giving all the nourishment to the baby. Where is placenta formed? Inside the uterus only, right? Now, second part, so can we say that A is uterus? A is uterus, hence the answer is clear, it is option D. Now, let us confirm the answer. The B part says sperms encounter egg here. So, let me complete this structure. Below the uterus is the birth canal which is made up of cervix and vagina and vagina. Together it is known as birth canal. Now, sperms enter inside the vagina and they travel, they cross the uterus and comes to the ampullar region of the fallopian tube where ovary releases its egg. So, here the egg is present, egg cannot reach further down to the uterus. So, it is quite obvious that sperms have to travel to reach the egg, right? So, the B part will be the fallopian tube and to be very precise, we can say ampulla of fallopian tube. But here the options are quite easy, uterus and fallopian tube is the answer. Next question, which of the following statements are true for unisexual flowers? Unisexual flowers possessing either male or female part. Yeah. Now, the first statement says they possess both stamen and carpal. The statement is wrong. We are talking about unisexual, either stamen or carpal, then it would have formed the right statement. They possess either stamen and carpal. Yes, this is the right statement. They exhibit cross-pollination. Very obvious because pollen grains will have to travel from one plant to another plant to fertilize the egg of the female. So don't you think cross-pollination is the only option of pollination in unisexual flowers? Then unisexual flowers possessing only stamens uh, cannot produce fruits, obviously. The role of stamen, stamen possess anthers. Anthers, the role of anthers is to produce pollen grains only. Fertilization and the fruit formation, all the process will occur in the female part, inside the ovule, isn't it? So, uh, it is absolutely right. The staminate flower cannot produce fruits. Pistillate flower, the one having the female part, can produce fruits, but the staminate flower cannot. So, second, third and fourth, all three are correct. Our answer will be option B. Fertilization is the process of dash. What is fertilization basically? Fertilization term can be used for both plants and animals and it simply means when the male gamete and the female gamete fuses together to form the new cell which is zygote. And please remember zygote is always unicellular. All living organisms, those which are multicellular, complex multicellular today, even us, we all were unicellular ones, we all were zygote ones. Now, fertilization is the process of transfer of male gamete to female gamete. This is wrong. The term says transfer. Actually, transferring means pollination. Fertilization, fertilization starts with the term fusion. Let's read the uh, rest of the options. Fusion of nuclei of male and female gamete, addition of male and female reproductive organs, the formation of gametes by reproductive organs. Let me give, let me do a slight correction. It is not fusion, it is fusion. So, the right statement is fusion of male and female gamete. I just told you that fertilization refers to the fusion of both the gametes. So, option B is the answer. Don't mind the mistakes, the typing error. Okay. Coming to question number 8. Read the following statement about reproductive health. You must have noticed this chapter is quite lengthy and in the end there is a specific topic regarding reproductive health in which you talk about uh, contraceptive methods. Based on that, these questions are given. You have to find out the incorrect statement. Let's read the first statement. Diseases like gonorrhea, syphilis and HIV AIDS are sexually transmitted. This is true. You have to find incorrect statement. Then again, gonorrhea, let me correct the spelling, double R H E A, and syphilis are caused by fungus and are transmitted sexually. This fungus statement is wrong. Actually, these are caused by bacteria. Gonorrhea and syphilis are bacterial STDs. 
Using condoms during sex helps to prevent the transmission of many infections to the some extent. This is true. Then examples of viral and bacterial uh, STDs are uh, AIDS, HIV and warts respectively. This is also true. So the incorrect statement is option 2. Can we say answer is option C? Rest of the statements are correct, isn't it? Let's come to next one. Copper tea is a contraceptive device used by women. If you remember the structure of the female reproductive part, this is the fallopian tube, fimbriae and the uterus. So what happens is there is a T-shaped device with a wire, with a string like this. So by the specialist, this copper tea device is inserted inside the uterus. What does it do? How it works as a contraceptive device? Whenever there is entry of sperms inside the uterus, see, it performs phagocytosis. Phagocytosis, how? It, it's, copper tea does not perform phagocytosis. The speed of the sperms rushing to fertilize with the ovule will be reduced. Now, because of the less speed, because of the reduced velocity of the sperms, our white blood cells will find it easy to recognize these sperms and they will perform their sole duty to eat these sperms because they consider this as, these sperms as the outer particles, as the foreign particles. So phagocytosis will happen which simply means that uh, WBCs of the female will start eating those sperms. Next what is going to happen? It is made up of copper. Now with the help of copper, the medium, the pH of the uterus will be changed which is not suitable for sperms and sperms are going to die. And the most important use of copper tea is it does not allow the formation of endometrium wall. And if there is no endometrium wall, the implantation could not happen. So this is how copper tea works. Next statement, sexually transmitted diseases can be prevented using condoms. In fact, this is the only method. The condoms are only method which at some point at which to some extent can prevent STDs. Now third, the ovulation takes place 10 to 12 days after the start of menstruation. This is also true. In human beings, male can produce sperms up to the age of 45 to 50. In human beings, male can produce sperms up to the age of 45 to 50. Actually, do you think may, for females it is possible that they can produce the female gamete up to 45 to 50 years of age. But for males, there is no particular age basically. There is no particular age for females. And let us revise a statement number 3. It says that ovulation takes place 10 to 12 days after the start of menstruation. Let me check the answer of this one. The fourth statement is not uh, absolutely right. So, and third statement also, it is not true. Let me correct this one. It is talking about the ovulation and the day or the as per standard 10th, you should remember that ovulation, the day of ovulation is actually 14th. It can vary, it can vary female to female. But here, the ovulation takes place 10 to 12 days. No, we should write 12 to 14 days or 14 to 16 days. That would be more accurate. So here, the right statement, you have to find the statements which are correct, right? So the right statement will be option 1 and 2. Option 1 and 2. I hope it is clear. The last statement, the third statement is, fourth statement is absolutely wrong because for males, the age of producing sperms is not restricted. It is lifelong basically. Coming to next one, uh, you have to do match the column A with column 2. Diaphragm. What is the role of diaphragm? So just like condoms, diaphragm is also a protective sheet which is used by females mostly. Copper tea. What is copper tea? I just told you, prevents the fertilized uh, egg to be implanted in the uterus. Then what is vasectomy? Vasectomy is the surgical method in which vas difference is removed. It is a very small surgery in which vas difference is removed so that sperms cannot travel further. The passage for the sperms is blocked. Then there is oral pill. Yes, prevents ovulation. And then there is diaphragm, fourth one, prevents entry of sperm into the female genital tract. Since diaphragm 
is under barrier method and the role of barrier method is to prevent or stop the entry of sperm inside the female reproductive tract this is a barrier it works as a barrier as a sheath and covers the reproductive organs so this is the answer now let's see a the answer of a is fourth one so these two are eliminated then copper t answer is three so answer for c is option two option a is the answer next one which among the following disease is not sexually transmitted syphilis is diabetes diabetes is not any kind of std beta aids and gonorrhea are diabetes is not this that question was quite easy now from the following drawing of flowers identify the flower, identify the flower which will self pollinate now this is diagram based question there is high probability that in your question paper such such type of questions might come now understand this the question says identify the flower which will self pollinate self pollination means in the same flower the anthers are producing pollen grains and they are fertilizing the uh, female gamete in the same flower itself now in this case you see the height of stigma is quite large and anthers are below the stigma so in this case it will be difficult for anthers to jump to stigma and fertilize it's wrong self pollination will not be easy for this flower coming to option b the anthers are absent here so it means that it is unisexual flower it will perform cross pollination how it will self pollinate then option c only anthers are present stamen is not present again it will uh, consider cross pollination now coming to this one the d option anthers are at a good height and stigma is below this is the perfect flower for self pollination see for all the bisexual flowers it is easy for self pollinate because both the male and female parts are present but sometimes to bring variation in the nature these flowers perform some modification now what is the modification they are trying to do look at option 1 the female part that is stigma is quite at a long height and anthers are at the lower region now this flower is in, has intentionally done this so that it can avoid self pollination and chances of cross pollination can increase in option a this is known as this is the condition of heterostyly this is not the part of uh, your syllabus but still you should know that to avoid self pollination plants modify themselves next one in flowers which one of the following conditions will increase chances of self pollination so you have to find the option which will increase chances of self pollination pistil is longer than stamen pistil is the female part if it is longer than stamen then it will be difficult for anthers to jump self pollination will be avoided stamen are just above the stigma of a pistil in flower this is the perfect condition for self pollination stamen means the male part is just above the stigma now you understand pollen grains will find it very easy to fall on the stigma let's read rest of the options in all flowers of the plant only pistil is present how can fertilization take place in all flowers of the plant only stamen are present again it is not possible so the question is quite related to the previous one next one the human embryo gets nutrition from the mother's blood with the help of a special organ named as i already told this concept if you remember while i, I was explaining the female reproductive part to you so during 9 months there is there must be some source of nutrition for that child that child uh, needs to perform all those life processes isn't it so how the nutrition is passed to the child there is a special disc like structure which is made up of blood vessels this placenta is responsible for the transportation of nutrients to the child next one in the flowering plant sexual reproduction involves several events beginning with the bud and ending in a fruit these events are arranged in four different combinations select the combination that has the correct sequence so let us uh, let us ourselves write the correct sequence we are talking about sexual reproduction so first of all the gametes will be formed male and female gamete we call it gametogenesis the process of formation of gametes once the gametes are formed they will fuse together and the fusion is known as fertilization before fertilization because we are talking about plants we can write pollination then after fertilization what will happen zygote formation will take place after zygote embryo will be formed and after embryo seed will be formed these are post fertilization changes now let us look at the question 
So it starts with embryo and then zygote, the sequence is absolutely wrong. First gametes, then fertilization, then zygote and embryo. And here, fertilization, this seems to be the right one. Let us read rest of the statements. Fertilization, then zygote, then gametes, this statement is wrong. Last one, gametes, zygote, fertilization is written in the end, it is again wrong. So now you understand, gamete formation taking place the first and then fertilization is happening, then zygote is formed and then embryo is formed. This is the right sequence. So hence our option B is absolutely right. Next one, okay, this is case study based questions. Based on paragraph, you have to answer certain questions all right there are no mcqs in this one i want you to practice such type of questions also let's read this x and y are two human beings okay this is x and this is y let's move ahead the organ a in the reproductive system of x a is the part of reproductive system of x releases a mature gamete b let's write down Right here only, what is A and what is B, it will simplify our answer. So, if we are talking about X first, okay, we don't know, we still don't know that X is male or female, okay. Let me remove this. We are not sure which is X and which is Y. Let's read the question. The organ A in the reproductive system of X releases a mature gamete B once a month. Now, this once a month signifies that X is actually female, X is actually female and A and B are the parts of female only. Let's read the line again. You have to read such questions again and again. The organ A in the reproductive system of X, this, this is an organ which is uh, releasing a mature gamete. So, can we say A is ovary and the mature gamete released here it will be ovum. Let's read it. Once in a month, it is very clear that we are talking about female. It goes into a tube-like structure C. Through a funnel-like opening, tube-like structure C is fallopian tube. Getting my point? Getting such type of questions? Now, next line. The organ D in the reproductive system of Y. Now, we are coming to Y and it is quite understood that Y is going to be male. Now, in Y, the organ D in the reproductive system of Y makes and releases gametes E. So, the gamete is actually E. Let's read, then we will write the answer. Which passes through a duct F. There is a duct F also. And are introduced by an organ of Y. Then it is introduced by an organ of Y into the body of X. Okay. B and E fuse together. B and E fuse together. See, read this again because now we are going to write down the names of these. The organ D in the reproductive system of Y makes and release gametes. D must be testis. E must be the gamete, which is sperm. Then it passes through the duct. F must be vast difference or sperm duct. Right? Then it says B and E fuse together. It means our answer is right now. Ovum and sperm fuses together. In C, in C, inside C, what is C? Fallopian tube. Right? To form a new cell, G. What is G? Gamete. G is gamete. The cell G divides repeatedly to form a ball of cells H. What is H? I, I am enjoying this question. What is H after gamete is formed? Gamete would be, okay, no, not gamete. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know you must be shouting, ma'am, it is not gamete. You should write zygote. Yes, it is zygote. So, B and E fuse together to form a new cell zygote. And then zygote repeatedly divides to form a ball of cells. Can we call this embryo? Can we call H as embryo, which gets embedded in the lining of organ, I of reproductive system of X. What is I here? Implantation takes place in uterus, endometrium of uterus. And to be very precise, embryo is not the right term here. We should write morula, morula or blastocyst, not even morula, let's call it blastocyst actually blastocyst is the ball of cells which is uh, embedded inside the endometrium of uterus and then onwards the pregnancy starts then after blastocyst embryo will be formed since let us be very clear with these terms right after fertilization zygote is formed now till three months of pregnancy we call it embryo and then fetus formation starts okay 
so what is blastocyst it is not uh, a big or you know organ formation does not even start in case of blastocyst it is just a ball of cells which is embedded in the uterus moving on i is uterus where it grows and develops into a baby see we have covered all the letters now let us come to question name organ a and gamete b organ a is ovary gamete is ovum next one write two names of tube like structure c fallopian tube what is the other name of fallopian tube oviduct fallopian tube and oviduct there are two names for this tube next one organ d and gamete e so organ d must be testis and gamete e is sperms next one write two names of duct f f must be vas deferens what is the other name of vas deferens sperm duct see if you are confused with this question take 2 minutes and give it a thorough revision you will be able to do this cell g what was g zygote ball of cells h blastocyst okay and organ i was uterus am i right let's uh, check this from the table we have made yup now out of x and y which is male and female very easy first we identified this only and then it was easy for us to solve the rest of the uh, parts y is male x is female can we write down y is female sorry y is male and x is female right so this is how some of the questions might come your homework is to give a very uh, precise reading of this chapter from your ncrt and solve all your ncrt exemplar questions so that's it bachcho i hope you like the questions and you understood all the concepts do not forget to read everything from ncrt and practice ncrt questions that is that must be your priority in all the subjects in all the uh, chapters so now it is time to say uh, bye bye take care of yourself now we are ending the session bachcho i'll meet you soon with the next chapter same way take care of yourself bye